People look at stories through different lenses. I have my own personal take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to another episode of In Case You Missed It on Sports Max. Well, with the Caribbean Premier League already in full swing, we continue to focus on the competition. The Women's CPL has now started and it's my pleasure to welcome a very familiar face, Wendy's cricketer Karishma Ramharak, who has suited up for her team, the Guyana Amazon Warriors. Karishma, welcome. How are you? Have you settled in nicely with your team? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, thanks for having me again. Um, I'm quite I'm quite settled with the team at the moment. We just had our first practice session. All right. You know, of course, you've gotten the opportunity to spend time with your team. I saw an article highlighting that the team visited the Shaheed's girls' home ahead of the competition. How was that team bonding experience for you? Yeah, um, firstly, I would like to thank the franchise for you know, bringing us across to Guyana you know, to meet up as a team. Um, before coming into Barbados, I think that experience itself, you know, spoke a lot to me about being, you know, being grateful for the things that we actually have and not, um, you know, take it, take it things for granted. Um, other than that, the girls were, you know, very eager to to be among us. They actually made us play hopscotch. I don't think I remember the last time I played hopscotch. So for me, it was like a, you know, a childhood. Uh, memory all over again. I remember we played hopscotch by Nani like probably when we were like 12 or 11 going primary school. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> been a long time since but it definitely was, you know, um, a, a good moment for me, you know, to see these girls and how eager they were to, to be around us. Yeah, well I was looking at your squad, there are some very, very big names how have the international players settled in with the regional players? Um, I, I believe that, you know, they are settled. Um, as I said, we had a couple, well, we had a session today on the field and I feel like these girls have been around for a while. They already started sharing knowledge and, you know, um, you know, just they, they fit in perfectly, to be honest. <laughs> Would you say playing alongside these international players can help your game? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, the names that we have in our setup are legends of the game. These are the biggest names in cricket. I would say we have the fastest bowler in women's cricket and the smash sisters, as they call them. So for me, it's all about, you know, learning as much as I can from them, um, take, uh, picking into their heads and, and taking experience from them uh, to better my game. So last year you played for the Guyana Amazon Warriors. This year you are with them yet again. How much of an honor has it been representing this franchise? Yeah, it's been a massive honor, um, especially to be selected first in the draft. Uh, it means that, you know, um, they're really looking and seeing something, you know, that I can offer to this team. And um, I hope that this year, you know, I'm able to perform uh, and give them that. So yeah. I'm very really looking forward to being a part of this team again. Yeah. What are you looking forward to most? And I'm talking about accomplishments wise for this CPL. Uh, look, um, I haven't played a, a cricket match since the World Cup. Uh, I would say a professional cricket match. So for me, it's all about, you know, getting back out there and finding that rhythm, um, you know, having a bit of fun with the girls and I'm just trying to, you know, just find back myself on the field. That's it for me at the moment. Yeah. And this year, the competition has been expanded to seven games. How pleased are you with this expansion, which allows you to get more games in? Because I know any opportunity for you to bowl, um, you're ready. And I've seen that you've been batting too. Yeah, um, you know, I'm really happy with the progress this tournament has made. I feel like, you know, it's just going to become 
play ground better as the year goes on or the years go on. So um, I'm really looking forward for the for the seven games that we have. Um, I'm saying seven because we are going to make the final. <laughs> Well, Stefani Taylor will lead this team again. How has it been working with her? Um, it's been, it's been, you know, um, great. She has always been the leader that we know she she is. Um, it's nothing new that I can say she's going to bring this year. I know that, you know, she has all the capabilities of carrying us all the way to the trophy this year. So it's just another, uh, you know. Um, series on tour that I'm looking forward to being a part of our part of her team and playing under her captaincy. Yeah, we spoke about the team briefly, but in your view, what are some of the main strengths of this Guyana squad? Uh, this year, I can't pinpoint um, either batting or bowling because, as I said, we have the fastest bowler in the world at the moment who just came off the 100 tournament, Shabnam Ishmael. She is in some hot, steamy form. Yeah. Uh, we got the Smash Sisters, who is who can take the game away from you at any point in time. So this year we definitely got the balance that we need, and I feel like you know it's it's our year. All right. Well, you're saying it's our year. The Guyana men's team they've always gotten so close to the CPL title, but has never been able to close it out. Do you think the woman can break that curse? And as you said, win one for Ghana. Uh, look, I mean, no team sets out to lose. So definitely winning is on our mind. Uh, I do hope the men win as well. I am supporting them uh, throughout this tournament as well. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, the both teams can bring that trophy to Ghana. Right, and Karishma, question that anybody would want to know. How do you prepare for big competitions like these, physically and mentally? I guess, um, you know, following your routines, sticking to your plans, um, you know, getting that game prep and um, that preparation going. So for me, it's all about, you know, doing the right things, eating the right things, training and getting my body fit and ready to step out on that field again. As I mentioned before, it's been a while, so you know, I'm quite excited to take that field again. So Karishma, injuries are unfortunately a part of sport. Any athlete's worst nightmare. How do you deal with injuries? Uh, thankfully, I've never had one that really kept me out of the game. So I can't tell you, you know, how I deal with them. But personally, um, I hope I don't have to. So uh, I can't really answer that question as I have never really had that major injury to keep me out. Yeah, really, really thankful for that. Uh, another question I know our viewers would want to know, what made you fall in love with cricket? And when did you know you wanted to be a professional cricketer? Uh, I fell in love with cricket at a very young age. Um, I started playing at the age of five. Uh, I played softball cricket for a really long time until I was 15. Um, that's when I was introduced to, to hardball cricket. And from then on, you know, I, I felt like I had the potential to, to do things. Uh, on my debut year, you know, I, I saw that I was able to travel the world. And well, at that point in time, it was, you know, uh, Dubai and Pakistan. And for me, it was, it was like such an amazing feeling to, you know, just get there. So I know that this was something I had to work really hard to, to maintain and um, since then I've been I've been putting in the hard work to stay in this game. Yeah, putting in the hard work and of course reaping those rewards. Have you made any major changes to your game from when you started to now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I felt like my fitness was a, a major issue. Well, for me personally, I, I didn't like the way I was, you know, reacting to uh, balls on the field and, and you know how how long I could bowl and stuff so for me um, getting fitter was was a big thing um, and it's still something that I'm looking to improve on um, it has definitely helped with the way uh, I have been able to perform and um, the way I move about on the field and stuff uh, that is bowling longer as well so uh, my fitness has really helped me you know um, gotten this far it has, it has really gotten me than I thought I would have.
Yeah, we all know you're a fitness junkie. One of the things though, people always point out to me uh, when you're playing is that when you take a wicket, your celebration is usually very, very muted. It's as if you take the wicket, you acknowledge that, hey, I took that wicket and then it's back to business. It is as if there's a game face mode on. How do you feel about that particular observation? No major celebration? Uh, personally, I've never really thought about it that way. I think I'm, I'm just a very calm character. I try to focus on what's next. Um, I guess get any butter out is the, is the job. And once the job is done, you know, you move on to, to the next one. So, um, I mean, I'm reserved, so my celebration might be reserved as well. Yeah, very, very muted. I think if I were celebrated, there'd be a lot of fanfare and excitement, but mm. we're different. So we get a muted celebration from you. Yeah, so you can look forward for that again. Yeah, well, earlier this year, <laughs> February to be exact, during the Women's World Cup, we lost our grandfather, Ramharak Sankalal, who is very, very dear to our hearts. Yet, despite that, at the end of the World Cup, you were the only West Indian to be named in the 12-member Upstock's Most Valuable 2023 ICC Women's T20 World Cup Team of the Tournament. How were you able to do that, to stay focused despite everything that was going on in our family? At the end of the day, we are all human beings and, and things happen. Uh, things that we can't control happens, but I feel like being a professional cricketer, you have to find ways in order to, to stay in the game and stay in the present moment. Uh, for me, it was def definitely really hard at that point in time, but I felt like my purpose on the team, you know, it was to be able to create pressure and create opportunities and for me to continue playing I had to you know at least give the team that be economical or take wickets if, if I could mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know I was able to to stay focused because it was something that I'm sure he would have been proud of as well he always wanted me to do well when I stepped up on the field yeah I was about to jump in and say that it's exactly what he would have wanted so this year has not, it, it has been one of our worst years yet. Because if losing power isn't enough, we've lost another one of our biggest supporters. A woman who lived her life for us, mom. I could say personally, she was very, very proud of your achievements and who you are as a person. And of course, I'll miss her messages when you take a wicket. Yeah, uh, I guess, you know, she, he was our biggest supporter and we just have to find that motivation to do it on our own now. Well, despite losing two valuable people in our lives, there has been small wins because recently the Big Bash League, they announced a new batch of world-class cricketers who've nominated, you've been nominated for the upcoming Weber WBBL and KFC BBL Overseas Player Drafts. You were among those names, so how did you feel when you saw that? Well, first and foremost, I need to get picked. Uh, that's my, you yeah, know... Yeah, but you were biggest. nominated in the draft. That's a yeah. big deal. It, it definitely is. I mean, it's really very, very hard to be recognized by the Australian um, cricket board. So just to get my name in there, you know, it's definitely a win for me. But sometimes celebrating these small wins now doesn't really, you know, matter. Um, when you can't really enjoy it with the people you like to. But at the end of the day, you know, life goes on and um, this is a career. So professionally, I'm really happy with the things that have out so far. Um, I'm looking forward to the draft as well. And hopefully, you know, I can stick my name into one of the teams. Yeah. Eventually, I can see you playing in the Women's Big Bash League. What would it mean to you to get that opportunity? Yeah, look, as I said, Australia is one of the biggest teams, the best teams in, in the women fraternity. And I feel, you know, just to be recognized by, by the board or their board, you know, as one of the better bowlers around, going around, uh, I feel privileged. 
I'll definitely be picked up by a team, you know. I'll definitely be, you know, excited. I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, be, I'll definitely want to be a part of any team that picks me up. I don't, I don't care who picks me up, but just <laughs> you to just get an go. experience. And, you know, just to be among those players. Yeah, I, I'm on that plane. Agreed. Well, after the CPL, it's back to Windy's duties. Any idea as to when's the next draw and who who you'll be playing? Yeah, luckily, um, Australia. We have an Australia tour coming up immediately after this C- this CPL. So uh, you know, Australia can see it fit to not have to pay my ticket, mm. and I'll be in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're hoping for the best. Uh, Chris, one of the things you know that has always stood out is we've both come from the same home. You are there doing your thing and I'm incredibly proud of you. Sometimes when I look at you on the field taking those wickets, I can't explain how I feel. You know, my paws raise, my heart does something called a backflip. Um, you know, you are truly an inspiration and definitely, I've always told you this, you're a very good human being. Anything you'd like to say to those watching this interview and would like to play cricket professionally? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, it all started off as a as a hobby, you know, and it definitely turned into a profession. So for me, I'd say, you know, it's never too late to to follow your dreams. And for me, it's all about, you know, being happy and enjoying what you do. So you you know you like something, go for it. There's no, it's never too late to follow your dreams. Yeah, well, Chris, it's now time for the most exciting part of today's interview. It's what we call here rapid fire time. So I will ask you a question and you have to say the first word or phrase that comes to mind. I didn't tell you about this. So are you ready? I guess. (laughs) All right. So let's go. Don't take too long. T20s or ODIs? ODI. Shorts or jeans? Shorts. Favorite meal? Curry chicken and rice. Hmm. Most beautiful country you visited so far? Dubai. Night in or night out? Night in. Funniest Wendy's, funniest Wendy's teammate? Cherry Ann Fraser. Is she that funny? She is crazy. What are you doing when you're not playing cricket? I'm training. Mm, reading or video <laughs> games? Uh, both. No, you have to pick one. It's rapid fire. Video games. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Favorite cricketer? Karish Maramher. Wow. I've heard too many cricketers come on this show and say themselves. Which song have you been listening to lately? Song, um, Metro Booming. What um, is it? I don't want to know. Metro Booming, I don't want to know. Oh, I, I need to I check that know. one out. Well, before you go, because it's time for you to leave me, let's head across the social media to see what the social media landscape had to say when you were named to the Women's T20 World Cup 2023 team of the tournament earlier this year. So we had Dudnat Andrew Seishnarine saying Trinidad repping. On YouTube, we had someone saying the female Sunil Narine, as well as Gita Danraj saying congratulations. And she is so happy for you. Anything you want to say to those who have supported you from day one and they continue to support you as well as will be looking out for you to do special things this CPL. Yeah, for sure. Um, to be called the female Sunil Narine is definitely a privilege. I mean, I, if, I always tell people if I can be as half as good as he is, I'll definitely take that and run. Um, but other than that, I'm really thankful for all the support I've been getting over the past year, you know, after the World Cup, it's been massive. So, you know, um, continue supporting me, I'll continue giving my best throughout my career. And um, yeah, just look forward to, to all the support, the CPL as well. 
Well, Karish Moy, it has been a pleasure chatting with you on In Case You Missed It. Best of luck at the Massey Women CPL 2023. And I'll be there cheering you on from the sidelines. Thank you and thank you for having me. Yeah. And hopefully this year we can bring it to Guyana. Yeah, looking forward to that. Well, folks, that's it from us for today. Be sure to like, share and comment. And let me know which team you're supporting at this year's Massey Women CPL. Goodbye for now.